What's up and welcome to the channel. In this episode, we're gonna be working on my GTR, so hang out for that. And don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. So we gotta get all this stuff out from underneath the GTR so that I can get the gas tank out and get this thing set on the rotisserie. The, uh, the struggle is real, working in a small shop. I think I spend as much time moving stuff around to get ready to work as I do working. All right, so it looks like what I've got to do to get this tank out, looks like there's two nuts here, and there's two nuts here. I've got these straps that bolt here and here on both sides. And I've got to get these hoses disconnected from the tank. And I should be able to drop this. I don't think there's any fuel in this thing, so it shouldn't be very heavy. So once I get all the bolts out, I should be able to just take it out by myself, hopefully. All right, so I've got this, this uh, big jack stand holding pressure on this uh, gas tank so that when I take the bolts out, it won't just fall onto the floor. I'll be able to uh, kind of stabilize it with my hand and then spin this little thing and let it down. I've got everything disconnected, I think, except for the top fuel lines and this hose here. Now, I took all the bolts out of this, the fuel neck. I'll have to let the car down to get it loose from up there. I don't really want to do that. And this rubber hose is pretty much cooked. I don't think I'm going to use that piece. So I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut that rubber hose just to make my life easier. These fuel lines run up through this little hole here and go to the top of the tank. They're attached to the top of the tank, but this fuel line is pretty much hanging there, so I think the whole fuel line will come down with the tank. That's the plan anyways. All right, so now all that's left is holding this thing in are the straps. And there's a bolt here. There's a bolt right there. So and that's on both sides of the tank. So we're gonna get those straps off and hopefully ease this thing down. So these bolts on the straps are pretty long. I'm gonna leave them threaded up in there a few turns. That way if this tank decides it wants to just fall and get away from me, these straps will actually still hold it. So this tank is, uh, I think it still has some fuel in it. It's not super heavy, but it's kind of awkward and it is kind of heavy. Um, not so much concerned with hurting the uh, fuel tank because I'm not going to be using this one. If I were to drop it, it wouldn't be a big deal. My concern is that I'm going to jar the car while I'm wrestling this off and maybe jostle the car off the lift and yeah, that would be bad. So let's go get my dad and uh, get him to put some hands on this thing and we'll get this thing out. All right, so we've got the gas tank out. Everything that's left on the car is pretty much just small brackets and lines and stuff that I can take off once it's on the rotisserie. So let's go outside and grab that rotisserie, get it put under the car, see if we can get it bolted to it. All right, let's get this thing inside. Got us a bunch of scrap pieces here. Let's take these in. 
These are what I use for Miata, so I don't want to don't want to cut that up. This is used for Porsche. I don't know if I want to cut that up. Let's see if I can get some of these pieces here. All right, so we've got this L bracket on the rotisserie and we're going to build a bracket off of it. It's going to attach to this. This is going to bolt in where the uh, reinforcement bolts. And then in here, we're going to take a small piece like this, drill a hole all the way through it, where it'll slide up onto where the cradle bolts up and then it'll attach to the piece just like this. Let me show you. Basically square it up like that and we'll weld it to there. And that should give this enough stability in the rear to hold everything up. All right, so we've got these little brackets here that are attaching to where the cradle bolts up. Got those in place. We're gonna be welding along the seams here. Now I can start working on building the bracket coming off here to attach the car there. So we're gonna use this metal here for the rear bracket that's going to attach where the reinforcement bolts up. And it's not quite wide enough it actually needs to be twice as wide as it is, so we're going to cut it into the section lengths that we need and then weld two pieces together to make the piece we need. All right, so we got our brackets all mocked up. Everything is ground off. I think we're ready to start tack welding this thing together. So now that we got the rear brackets tack welded into place, we can move to the front brackets Go ahead and get the holes drilled in those, and then get those test fit on the car.
All right, so we got the L brackets on the front, and we're catching the pickup here for the uh, cradle mount. And there's another cradle mount in the back that we're coming off of. And we're going to weld right here. We're going to tack it in. And on the other side, we're going to box all this in and put some gussets to help give it some strength. We're going to do the same thing on this side. All right, so we got all the brackets tack welded. We're gonna pull all the brackets back off the rotisserie and off of the car, and then we'll break out the Lincoln welder, our bigger welder, and weld all this stuff up and start adding some gussets. And then we'll put everything back on, and we should be able to let the weight of the car on the rotisserie and make sure everything spins right. All right, so we got these L brackets off the rotisserie. We just tack weld them on. Now we're going to fill in all the seams with the big Lincoln. All right, so let's have a close-up look on what we actually did. We put these little brackets here to kind of reinforce this bracket. We put a little gusset here. Seam welded everything on the rear. Seam welded these pieces on all the way around. We boxed in this end here and put these reinforcements here. So that should be good. I think we're ready to start bolting these brackets back on the rotisserie and get them bolted to the car. And then we can let the weight of the car on the rotisserie and make sure everything is stable.
All right, so we got this thing all bolted together, got everything tight. Now we're gonna let the car down onto the rotisserie by letting the lift down. And hopefully we've got it centered where it spins easy. Let's give it a shot. All right, so we got this thing under its own weight. Nothing's really bending. Everything seems to be really stable. We've got the uh, legs of the lift out of the way. We're gonna try to rotate it and see if we've got it centered well enough where it's not top heavy or anything. So let's see if this thing spins. All right, so we spun this thing Halfway on its side, it doesn't seem to be top heavy, and it started puking down there. You can see it, some brake fluid or something, I'm not sure, and it's dumping ash all over the shop floor. So I think I'm gonna roll it outside before I flip it all the way over. But in the meantime, I can go ahead and get all these brackets and get the brake lines the rest of the way taken off, and uh, I'm gonna get a wire wheel and start cleaning off some of this burn up seam sealer. We also put, since this leg is so short sticking out of here, these bolts have a tendency to kind of work, them way, work their way a little bit loose throughout the process of getting it blasted and painted. We always try to keep these, checking them and keeping them snugged up. But with this being so short, if this car were upside down and this were to work loose, it could fall. So we put this little bolt in here on both sides as a safety precaution where this cannot fall through if this were to loosen up. Because that's the last thing I want to happen is uh, <laughs> this thing to fall off the rotisserie. So with it being on the rotisserie, it makes it real easy to get to the bottom side, get everything cleaned up on the bottom, and then when he's blasting it, it'll be able to access and blast it really well. Also, gives you really good access to the top side. If you're going to work on the top or in the interior, it's going to make it a lot easier when I go to paint it as well. got the brake lines off this thing so it shouldn't be leaking any more brake fluid so let's go ahead and spin this thing 360 and see how well it does. All 
Most people work just hard enough not to get fired and get paid just enough not to quit. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be about it for this video. We've got a little bit more work done on the GTR. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video on the GTR. We should be able to get the bottom side cleaned up a little bit, and we'll get this thing over to the blasters.